we didn't stop. And, you know, I actually, I, I compressed all the touring time from 07 to last year. Mm-hmm. And this does not include time away to do records or time away to do press or time away to do video or anything else. This is just touring. And I compressed it all together. It's five years straight of your life, of my life away from my kid, my home, my family, my friends. You know, and it's that's 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 a lot of time, man. Yeah. The little boy in me that was wild with fright. Nobody came to my rescue when I called out that night. So many times, so many tries, so many cries for help in life. It's too late now. Um, yeah, I was going through, I was going through a bunch of old stuff the other day. I have like a, an old, uh, remember there's old chests that people used to have back in the days to put their wardrobes in there and all that oh, stuff yeah. and go on ships and stuff. Oh, yeah. well, I inherit, I inherited one Breather from trunk. my, right, exactly. Yeah. And I inherited one from my, my mom and, uh, I keep a, a bunch of stuff in there. Just, you know, a lot of you know memorabilia and found a bunch of old nothing face stuff i actually found ozfest stickers like the back you know the the stickies and stuff yeah you know what i still have somewhere in my house is remember when tvt did the promo items for violence and there was those knives that you could push the button and had the psycho you have one of those i still have one of them oh man dude i just found the jacket remember the violence jacket we had dude i i bought one from you guys i still have (laughs) mine not the padded one the other dickies like the one that's not padded yeah, I got. I, I found um, mine the other day, man. I was just like, "Damn, it's like in perfect condition." Those, you know, those are great jackets, man. It's lasted me <laughs> twenty years. I, I can't. Uh, I can't believe we actually. I mean, I, I don't know if we could get away with doing something like that today, like that artwork with the dude, you know, stabbing the knife. each other. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty cool for the time. After I, I look back at it and go, "Wow, we were, you know, we we really didn't care." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so how yeah. have you been man since the the beginning of the year i know hell yeah i was supposed to come uh, out and now you guys are home and how are things going well i mean i mean it's 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 groundhog day every day yeah. you know i mean it's it's really i mean if anything i'm taking stock of a lot of riffs and a lot of mm-hmm. i'm not writing songs per se i'm mm-hmm. just kind of just taking stock of, of hooks and riffs and stuff. And my uh, wife has like a, a, a honey do list that is so long, <laughs> you know, so I've been going from room to room to room to room and renovating and painting and tearing stuff down. I mean, just keeping busy and, you know, and, uh, but it's, 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 I mean, it's, I mean, what can I say? I mean, it's yeah. just, you know, I'd, I'd love to be playing, but at yeah. the same time, at the same time, you know, we, we, uh, I think this break is also very much needed just so that we can still digest, you know, everything that, you know, we went through getting this last record done and sure. trying to focus and, and, and figure out how, to uh to move forward yeah you know so you know it's it's you know we're all kind of just separated and doing our thing and a couple guys are out in vegas living out there you know chad and and brady and then kyle lives down in atlanta and he's got a school that he's you know one of those let there be rock schools where he's constantly busy and he's got tons of kids coming in and learning how to play acdc and you know, and Black Sabbath songs and, yeah, you know, and it's good, you know, I'm glad, you know, and I think, I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it sucks that, you know, we're all kind of sitting back waiting to see what happens, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm taking advantage of it and really letting, you know, letting all the edge kind of file down a little bit. Sure. Yeah. I think it, I think for, you know, me, it's like, you know, I, I, you know, I do financial planning as my day job for, for artists basically. Right. And 
you know, you look at the situation and it's like, go, 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 keep your business going, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, in, in you know, but it's given me time of like the threat I've made for the, like the longest time of like, oh, I'm going to write a record now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our good friend, mutual friend, Stephen Shaw's like, why don't you go get logic asshole and go mm-hmm. start doing it? And that's what I've done. And it's like, like you said, the time of taking stock in what's going on out there and just mm-hmm. kind of taking a moment to breathe. I mean, this is probably... I mean, I would think back and think back through Hell Yes history. I mean, Hell Yes was first time was 08, 09? First record came out in 07. 07. So, I mean, that's yeah. you know, over 13, 14 years of not stopping, really. You guys did not stop. We didn't stop. And, you know, I actually I, I compressed all the touring time from 07 to last year. And this does not include time away to do records or time away to do press or time away to do video or anything else. This is just touring. And I compressed it all together. It was five years straight of your life of my life away from my kid, my home, my family, my friends, you know, and it's, that's, that's, that's a lot of time, man. You know, and, I mean, granted it, it flies by, you know, I mean, you're having fun and you're doing, doing what you love to do and you're seeing the world and stuff, but that's a lot of time. And I thought about it, it like really like jolted me a little bit. I'm like, you know, wow. You know, I mean, my, my kid's 12, oh, wow. you know, like, like he's, you know, literally like, you know, you know, five years out of his life that I was gone, even though, I mean, it's, you know, you come home and stuff, but you know, it's, it's, it's still a pretty remarkable number, you know? And there's other musicians and other guys who can triple that, you know? Sure. Mm-hmm. How yeah. Do you, how, do you uh, hand, how do you handle that when you're, when you were in that, like if you could go back and kind of think about your emotional state of mind, like mm-hmm. we're on tour um, and like the stretch is going to be several months and then you're going to come back. Is there like, you know, kind of like a, it's a pull, like, you know, like, oh man, should I be, should I be yeah, playing? the worst of it is, the the leading into leaving mm-hmm. you know like once you're home and you're i mean me and my family like me and my kid were like this right right and um when i it always was hard to tell him i had to go mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it was like you kind of have to ease into it and then i'm getting anxiety thinking about it because yeah. You know, you're leaving, leaving him home. And my wife is at that point becoming a single parent, having to digest everything on top of her career. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, and then there's other things you have to consider too, you know, like, you know, daycare for after mm-hmm. school, you know, and what, and, and whatnot, but it's, you know, it's, it, those are things that you can work out, but emotionally it, it, it's, it's, it, it, it got worse the older he was getting. Because when he was a baby, right. it was, you know, a little, it was easier for me. I mean, I'm sure it was a, you know, a little emotional for him. Like, where did, you know, my dad go? You know what I mean? But as he got older, you know, he started to understand. And then you know, he would get like visibly upset when I tell him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I had to go. And then, you know, the first couple of days out on the road are, you know, you know they're a little bit screwy you know you got a lot yeah. of emotions going on and stuff and but you then you kind of you know i get set it in and, and almost it, it almost seems kind of cruel in a way when you think about it because you know you're home and and all of a sudden you're on the road and then all of a sudden you kind of a switch goes off and you're not really thinking about home that much anymore you're thinking about the bus and getting up and yeah. playing and that whole schedule and it just seems kind of you know like kind of callous in a way you know what i mean like you know you kind of mm. can switch that emotion off mm. and all of a sudden you're in you know your band mode. mode yeah right well, you're used and to- then but right I, and, you know and then you know after about especially on a long stretch like say it was like a six to eight week run yeah you know after about the sixth week or the fifth week, you start really, it starts gnawing at you. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you just like you're just fucking done. You know, you just want to get off the bus, <laughs> get away from all these idiots. <laughs> you know, and just I'm tired of fucking hotels, and I'm tired of you know, just tired. Yeah. <laughs> just sort of go home and sit in my man cave or my sleep in my own bed and eat in my own kitchen and drive my car and hang out with my kid, my wife, my dog. And, you know, just, uh, you know, it, it, but you know what? I wouldn't trade it for the world though. I mean, it yeah. was great. You know, I mean, it still is, you know, it's like, I love touring and I love being a musician and writing albums. And I mean, if I have to, you know, if I have to pick the best of all of it, it's, it's, making records i love mm-hmm. making records and man you know, you're, you're you're a fucking riff master dude one oh, thing- man, thank you. <laughs> i'm still i'm still i'm still hunting you know and that's a good thing because i'm like always dude. in the hunt to like right now i'm trying to uh uh it's the word i'm looking for um reinvent yeah. you know i mean i'm kind of i, I won't say that i'm bored with what i'm doing or but I've kind of hit a wall with it. I'm like, all right, you know, that's, that's great. But now I need to like take it even further. Let's go to a different planet, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's so funny you say that because Greg and I were talking before and it's like, I've seen you, you know, I've known you for a long fucking time. I mean, I was at the show when Jason Flom came to see you guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. Back when you guys were on tour of stuck mojo, like I, you know, 98, 98, when Kurt, when Steve Kurtz was your guy's lawyer at that time, he was a friend of mine. That's how I found out about you guys. I was like, right, right. right, he played right. Me pacifier. And I was like, you got to work with these dudes. I'm like, you have to. Yeah. Right. That was a while, man. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. That's a long time ago. And I just, you know, you, you talk about, you know, your passion for writing or, or kind of the search or chasing the dragon of what the new riff is or how you're going to, reinvent how you play or how you feel about how you play right like i've always one thing i've always admired about you is it's like it was never the bullshit solo just to throw a solo in there it's you know it was always it yeah. was always rhythmically playing it was like with attitude it's like the way eddie would play the way dime would play it was like that Tom right. maxwell sound you you knew it within the first two fucking bars well i really appreciate that i mean to me you know I, i'm i'm really i wasn't wired that way to be that kind of guitar player you know what I mean? And even though I enjoy doing little solos and playing and stuff, you know, I'm, I'm more of a part guy, you know, like I always like looked up to players like Neil Sean from journey, oh, for example, Yes, because he writes little songs within a song. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you listen to any journey song or solo, you know, don't stop believing, for example, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They're like little songs and they're memorable. Yeah. And, oh. you know, and Vinny, yeah, oh, look, right. And Vinny mm. used to say the same thing too. You know, he was just like, you know, his style of drumming, he always wanted somebody to play air drums to what he was doing. Oh. You know, like the Phil Collins in the air tonight type of thing. Dun, 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 dun. You know, those hooks, you know, and, you know, so for me, it was always about writing was the first part. Like I have to write songs that, uh, that are great, you know, at mm-hmm. least, to, you know, in my, in, at least to me, you know, I have to feel comfortable with them. The other parts, the solos and stuff were a distant second. You know, it's like, you know, with nothing face, we never did solos, you know, I was, yeah. I was like too, I was too busy, you know, <laughs> Killing it and downstroking, yeah, <laughs> you know. And then with Hell Yeah, it was more of like, well, in the earlier days, you know, the first few records were were like the first album. I love the first record. You know, it, it was uh, it was all of us coming together for the first time. You know what I mean? Like when you first meet that chick, and you're like, you know, I'm gonna have sex with her. I'm gonna have sex with her. <laughs> I'm gonna have sex with her. <laughs> And then the second and third record were kind of blurry to me. I thought we were out of focus. There was, you know, a little bit too much riffraff going on. And then by the time, you know, things kind of came to a boiling point with some of the other members that we parted ways with, you know, I, it, it, I was thrown into the hot seat to write everything. And that was from Blood for Blood oh, to our last record. record. And so I was like, okay, this is, this is my opportunity to kind of write the kind of songs that I want to write. And I kind of leaned towards some of the old nothing face kind of mentality on some songs, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's, 
you know, it's a totally different thing because it's a different dynamic when you have Vinnie Paul on drums mm-hmm. and then Kyle on bass and then Chad's completely different singer than what Matt was, you know, but it was kind of like, okay, this is, this is going to be my playground. So we're going to have, I'm going to just go for it. You know, if there was any man that should have been doing it. It's, it's you, you know, um, oh, thanks dude. There was one thing you said to us when we were, we were hanging out with you at the Birch Hill show. You, uh, you said, what? I can't, I can't wait to just go home and be a ghost and just write. Music. Yeah. I feel like that's my favorite thing to do. Well, that, that was the time when you guys were writing, because I was tech, I teched for you for that show. I was your t- Michelle Michelle Oaks called me and goes, "Hey, I need you to come out and work for nothing." Oh, right on, on, dude. Oh shit. And um, what show was that? Was that with, uh, Donnie was Brooke? Donnie Brooke oh, wow. opened and you guys headlined. That's right. I think we actually played like a brand new song that night for the first time. You like, did a song that never made it on an album. <laughs> and also, like, <laughs> also like Bill. Bill was back in the picture and like. Yeah, yeah. And he was at the soundboard playing like demos you guys were working on, which basically yeah. became skeletons. Yeah, I mean that that was a weird record, man. I mean, it was uh it was one of those records that we kind of lost focus on. You know what I mean? That's when Matt started kind of dabbing in the wrong side of life a little bit and you know, kind of going downhill personally and unfortunately, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh but it, it was still a fun record to make. You know, we had some good good times with it. Yeah. Um, um, like, ahead, Greg, sorry. But I still like being a ghost, by the way. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> I love being a ghost. I am the most non, like, I never go out, man. Like, you know, I, I don't. I mean, not that there's anything to go out to do right now anyway, but even when things were happening and shows were going on, I really wouldn't go out. You know, I mean, I tour so much that the last thing I want to do is go see Plus, Another band, plus, yeah. Yep. Unless it was a band that were friends of mine, and or somebody that I really liked, or something like that. But you know, like when you were on, like even for us touring, it was nonstop. Even when we weren't playing, because Vince could not sit still. You know, he was like the type of guy who he okay. wouldn't take a day off. You know, he would he would get up, go into the hotel, you know, take a shower go get something to eat and then have your whole night planned out. So you didn't really have any time unless you really, you know, wanted to take that time away. You know, it just never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> the last man. thing I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was just nonstop with, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's so amazing. You talk about the length of touring and, and how that all goes. And I remember when you guys were up in for Pantera, Yep. Yeah, that was a three month tour. That was a grinder. It was a grinder, man. And I tell you, that was like, uh, I think it was one of the best educations we ever got, you mm-hmm. know, because not only were we touring with one of the greatest fucking bands ever, like totally. ever, but they were the gr- greatest people ever, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like the crew as well. I mean, a couple of those guys came and worked for us, you know, like Sterling, who was. Yeah, Winfield, yeah, sure. Not only their engineer and worked in the studio with them, but he went out and was a bass tech for Rex. And then Kat, of course, was yep. Vinny's drum tech. He came out and worked with uh, Hell Yeah as well. So, you know, it was, it was a big family, man. They were the greatest dudes. They really were. And I remember being so petrified of like, you know, it's fucking pants. Tara, these guys are going to eat us alive. They're probably going to be just dicks. You know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. like, you know, hey, now like, you're young and you're, you're completely, you know, uneducated, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff. And then it turns out that they were, you know, absolute angels, you know? Yeah. They play a lot of shenanigans on their bands. I mean, did, did they do that to you or? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget one night we pissed off Guy Sykes. Yeah. You know him, right? <laughs> I remember him. <laughs> and he uh we go in, we bring our gear in, we're looking for a dressing room, and he put, you know, because you know how like, you go backstage and mm-hmm. they'll have the band band's name on the dressing room door, right? Mm-hmm. Well, our band name was on the exit door. <laughs> 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 that was our dressing room. <laughs> Outside the building. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> I never 
Here's the real I, treatment. I, I I always bring that up, and he fucking laughs his ass off to this day about it. Um, so kind of to pivot away, you know, moving forward, like you've been writing riffs, you've been hanging at home, doing the honey do list. That's probably you know the size of uh, War and Peace. Like mo- yeah. most guys who've been touring for the past years of their adult life, you know what what do you kind of do to occupy your time now besides writing and besides the honey do list, do you have any plans to kind of move forward in some other direction? Or are you just waiting to see what kind of happens with hell? Yeah. I, I was talking to doc. Right. Um, I, Boy, I, did oh, yeah. his, I did his podcast and awesome. I got, I got pretty emotional on it and said some things that people kind of were wondering about, <laughs> like, especially like some of my bandmates, you know, they were just like, are you uh, not going to ever do another record? You know, and it's not <laughs> what I said, you know what I mean? Right. And it was more of like, I mean, I'm still trying to process losing one of my best friends in the world. And he was like my partner, you know, songwriting. Yeah. And for me, it's like, how do I go forward without this guy that right. I depended on that I bounced my ideas off of and vice versa. And I, and it, and it like, pisses me off you know and i'm just like kind of like a you know uh, a, a pissed off little kid who's just stomping his feet saying i don't want to do this i don't want to do it i don't want to do it i'm not saying that i won't right yeah. but but it's 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 a process that i'm gonna have to i gotta you know like i just gotta feel not confident but i just gotta feel like i can do it and do it and be convincing and not be I don't want people to think that we're doing it just to do for it. money or yeah. I don't, you know what I mean? And I, I've always, I've always tra- kind of been transparent, you know, musically and, and honest. And I want it to be that. And I want, I, I just think it's a little bit more time has to go by mm-hmm. for myself to feel comfortable to do it and, and have the confidence, I guess. I guess there is a confidence thing there, mm-hmm. you know, with sitting. Because listen, you know, there's songs on the last three Hell Yeah records that I wrote without the band even being around. You know, I went into the studio with Kevin and I just had one riff. We have Petrico, and I yes, just had yeah. one one riff and we built songs from that. Like uh, Welcome Home. Welcome oh. Home was that was a song that I wrote. What about Oh My God? Cause that riff to me reminds me of like, it has your DNA all over it. Yeah. That oh. was a, that was the riff that, uh, that me and Vince wrote in Texas at his house. That song, oh, wow. we, we did that, but like a song like welcome home. I wrote in the studio mm-hmm. just with one riff. Uh, love falls was that way. Hush was that way. Um, a song called grave was that way. I mean, yes. it can happen. It can, it, it does work. You know what I mean? Like you can make that happen. Especially with someone um, like Sherco, who's got like a very like Mutlang kind of approach to things. He kind of takes it where it's like, give me whatever you have and I can build around it where a lot of guys well, that's, probably can't. That's where he that. learned. That's yeah. uh, he was he was Mutt's Yeah, it was Mutt's guy know, for, for Mutt's guy for twenty yeah, some yeah. years. Why? Yeah, dude, he's Mutt's engineer. Yeah, he he the way they do like he, uh, Mutt, he like absolutely mind blowing. Like with yeah. with vocals with Death Leopard before they started. Yeah. Like, oh. Like he's the one that got them to do those harmonies and have them do. Oh, yeah. a- I don't think. Well, he did. They didn't do those harmonies. That was Mutt Lang singing those harmonies with yeah. Joe. Oh, is that re- is that the truth? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No other band members. No other band members. No Absolutely. Pyromania. <laughs> Pyromania is an incarnation. I did not know that. That is. Yeah, oh there, yeah. There is no way. There is no way Steve Clark. And fucking the other, there's other two, the other two guys are going up there singing like fucking angels, dude. It's not, it's not happening. It's all, it's all Joe Elliott and Mutt Lang doing all that stuff yeah. behind their back when they weren't there. Oh, he would sit in the studio. <clears throat> he would sit in the studio with his microphone and do those tricks, man. I mean, he was, a, and Kevin turned out to be the same way. Kevin's Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he's no, a, he's a I mean, fucking wizard, dude. I mean, I, yeah. I I remember going in just in there to you know, well, it's every song, you know, we we would go in, we track, I would lay down guitars, and then I'd come back the next day, and it would the song was completely rewritten, 
It was restructured. There wow. was, you know, there was. Yeah, he worked for Mutt. <laughs> Jesus and his apostles singing in the background. You know what I mean? There was a ten, a fifty-piece orchestra happening, and you know, but uh, it, but it was great. You know what I mean? That's what that's what great producers do. That's that's what one of the things I'll say and why I love making records because with an album you can do anything and everything, and it's going to be forever. Live is live. It's it's the band's job to figure out how to pull it off live. Yep. And I've never been I've never been a tape dude. So we've never ever had backing tracks. We always stripped it down to what we could do as a five piece and make it nasty. You know, it's going to a gunfight with a fucking razor blade. Yeah. No, not not going on stage with four fucking apples on the side stage running backing tracks and, it, to, and it's so much the standard now like that you know, going, bands playing to themselves over pro tools rigs and shit like and faking it in the microphone yeah. like these jackasses going up there pretending they're singing and the people out front don't know any fucking different they're like yeah. man that guy's singing so fucking great we're just like the record because it was the record <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> he ain't singing fuck, shit fuck. man i love the wrong <laughs> fuck that shit i mean i'm okay with the backing samples and stuff um but when it comes to the singing part, I, I mean, I know a lot of bands do that. A lot of I mean, listen, I mean, look, we all, I mean, this, I, I come from a generation what? like you guys. Okay, you come up, it's about putting on a fucking guitar, getting behind a drum kit, and beat the fuck out of your face, and even something very, it was all live. You know what I mean? We didn't have inner ears. We didn't have a fucking uh, uh, a tempo going on. Metronome. Some, some, met, yeah. We didn't have none of that shit. We sometimes the samples would be a little faster than what we were playing, or vice versa, versa. We might be going a little bit too fast for the sample. But who gives a fuck? It's live. You just do yeah. it and you kick some ass. Right. You know the record. If you want to hear the record, there it is. Put it on stay and home. stay home and fucking smoke some weed and fucking just. Get lost in it, but huh. live, live is supposed to be live. You should yeah. die stroke so fast that you drool. I, I still do. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> I might not as be as fluid as I used to be. I mean, nothing face riffs, man. We're fucking. Which by the, by the way, you just recently had surgery on your hand, right? My left hand, yeah. yeah. The right, the right hand still still crushes it but i mean they all work in unison with each other but yeah i had to get um i had to get i was getting trigger finger because i got in a oh. car accident oh. and my my middle finger would lock up like it would get like in this position and i could not will it back up it would just stay there i had to like push it to get up to go make it go up so they they i don't know if you see the scar or not but oh wow yeah but I had a fantastic hand surgeon who happened to be a huge Nothing Face and huge Pantera fan. Oh, loved great. nothing, loved how he had. <laughs> and we'd sit there and we'd talk. And I mean, he still sends. I mean, that's, he's he's so cool that we we text each other all the time, and he sends me videos of him playing ACDC or some shit or his, some shitty guitar he's got. You know what I mean? <laughs> the fucking surgeon, and he's got a shitty fucking guitar. <laughs> lose the porsche and get a real gibson bro dude seriously <laughs> you can have both you can have yeah, it right both if you're that's right a good that's surgery. right yeah man i have that's a right. located finger right here um and oh my, god look at that I never got surgery on it or we like I, I i'm like three people no like my parents were like never got surgery on it. i was 12 and it's never ever been the same so it locks what did up. you do i was playing basketball with my brother and i kept rejecting him and then my finger popped out and it's never been the same, but I mean, I get around, but it locks up all the time. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever I do, I'll like open the door and it like pops out. I'm like, oh shit. It's like back here. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sure you could still get it worked on if you really care to do it. But I said, he's like, they got to put the ligaments and like they're stretched out to hell. But I was like, let me use my strong hand. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. Man. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, so, so now, now okay. Yeah, you're all good. good. Dexterity is all good. And you know, um, yeah. I mean, I, if I if I could say before that happened that I was at a hundred percent. Right now, 
it's probably like 99%. You know what I mean? There's, there's yeah. a little, little things, but it, you know what? It, it, it only bothers me if I do a slide or something, you know what I mean? It, 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 but there's no pain anymore. You know, it, it was, it was, it was pretty successful. Take it by three, so you keep it lubricated. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, does. it really does. I think it does. I do a lot of sanding as well. <laughs> oh, uh, what do you mean sanding? You're just being like uh, sarcastic. No, like seriously, like, uh, or for the my, like that motion, like this motion, you know, like you know, like fucking what's his name, uh, Daniel San from me, yeah, Daniel San, Daniel San. That stuff that actually really helps out. So what I would do, even back in the nothing face days, man, I would just sit with like a rag or a piece of sandpaper on a wall and just go back and forth constantly with both hands, just kind of like warming it up a little bit, but also just kind of getting that motion. To the point where it was just like you know, wow. secondary. You know, it was it was just natural. That's fine. Off season training with Tom Maxwell. Back when I was <laughs> driven to do things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's ask some questions because I, I mean I mean I'm curious because like it's nothing face obviously because of Mike. Um, you guys were our our favorite band. We were coming up in a band. Um, yeah, when I was producing our, Greg. Uh, our big influence um, growing up. So, uh, thank you. Yes, no problem, man. Thank you. Um, how did what happened with with Chris Hulk? Um, uh, you know, first, like when then you got Sickles. Like Chris Hulk was a mm -hmm. was a beat, right? And Sickles was awesome too. But I'm a mm -hmm. drunk fan of everything before violence and after, of course. But mm -hmm. like, Sickles was not on violence. Your your first person, though. right? Right. He, uh, yeah, Tommy only played on the Skeletons record, but Chris, like you said, he's a fucking beast, man. He was, uh, he was really, really, now that I look back at it, you know what I mean? It's hard. You don't really, you know, I didn't see it that way or the way that I do now back then on how important his role was. You know what I mean? Like as far as even for myself and Bill, because we were, you know, riff writers. Mm -hmm. And then Chris wrote some songs too. You know, I mean, he, he could barely play, but he could play enough that he took out this riff I wrote. Right. You know, I think he wrote fucking Bleeder or something like that. Like the, really? the, 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 yeah, he wrote like the chorus riff to that. That's a Chris Hap riff. He, yeah. Wow. He wrote that. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, I know, man, and it's so great to be surrounded by musicians that can do that, that inspire you. You know, I've, there's a lot of guys out there. I'm, I'm going to walk outside real quick, but I still got you. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys who are kind of anal retentive about sharing that, you know what I mean? There's dudes like I'm the songwriter or I got this covered drummer, just play drums, drummer, <laughs> you know, or, or bass player guy. You know, <laughs> but, but not play those four strings. I play six. Stay in your lane, pal. Stay in your lane, pal. <laughs> but it, that the drummer, you know, give you the idea and like be open to it. That makes that would make me want to work with you that much more. You know, so. Well, the thing is, I I like to be surrounded by great talent. You know what I mean? I like yeah. I like being surrounded by people that inspire me to be better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's cool to hear a riff that one of your buddies brings in and you go, man, I wish I wrote that fucking thing, you know what I mean? but I'm glad you did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you put your, and then you put your, uh, mm -hmm. your flavor on it and you can make it your own, you know? And you guys were tuned in, uh, you guys open a, is that it? Nothing face. Yeah. We had a very strange tuning that I stole well, I didn't steal it, but I borrowed from Led Zeppelin. It's yep. a Zeppelin tuning. It's an open A. And what I fucking put it through my hollow bodies and those marshals, it just came out pretty sinister. Yeah. You know, and that's when we wrote, Creepy, that's dude. when we wrote like Gold Tooth and yeah. Villains and Can't Wait for Violence yeah. and Blue, uh, Blue Skin. Piss and Vinegar. Oh, God. 
Yeah, I remember that one. Breathe Out was the first song written in that tuning. Now that brings me to my next question. Was there actual lyrics to Breathe Out? Because it sounds like he's just freestyling. Yeah, he, he, he did a bunch of scratch on that on the, in the studio. He was just kind of making shit up. But he, uh, I don't know if he ever, ever developed an actual line for it, you know, you know, but that was the ongoing thing that, see, I, I never paid attention. You know what I mean? I, I, cause when people sing heavy, I, it's hard for me to make out what they're saying. So I never really cared. Melody you know, is the, like the thing I paid it, like his, his, obviously he had this like flow to him. It was kind of mm-hmm. like, right. But it was rhythmic. It was, with, it was really rhythmic. And I really, that. and then when he sang, it was, it was really, it was really captivating. Like it would captivate me, but I never knew lyrics. I'm, all, I'm like a melody guy. And, the, yeah. and then when I hear the melody, then I want to go read the lyrics, but there was no lyrics for that in the actual album. Like, so we were, yeah. Like, about yeah. That. It's because, yeah, it's true. It's because there was none, you know, he just kind of free formed <laughs> it, <laughs> you know, and you know, Matt was, Matt was unique, man. He, he had a, he had his own thing going on. And I think that's what separated us from a lot of bands. You know, sometimes I think one of the things that we, we never really tapped into was actually writing like what we understood to be a single, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, cause we didn't get it. You know, we didn't understand what it was. We didn't think there was any room for what we did on the radio anyway. So we didn't care. You know, we kind of just it sounded like a, 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 a hit though to me, like, right. To me, I, though, think, I mean, I think it was just such, I mean, being around it and being around you guys at that time, to me, it I mean, was like I was working on pop records. I was like, this could go up against any of these assholes. Like right. I always felt that. I always felt that. Well, I just well, it would have been cool if we would have had the radio like we have today. You know, if we would have had yeah. Jose, serious. we would have had right. We would have had Jose back then, and Octane would at the level that it's at right now. It could have been a different ball game for all of us. Well, funny how you that know, one works because he was probably he worked at TVT at the time when you guys were signed. No, yeah. he, he actually was, he was a radio rep at TVT. He took that job at TVT because we were signed to TVT. Really? Yeah. He, he was a huge fan. I know he, he came down. I can't remember where he came from. I know it was either out west or down south. Arizona. Something. Right, Arizona. Okay. He's from Arizona. And then he got to, he took the job at TVT because he wanted to work with us. And then I remember how he was like so heartbroken when he told us that he got the offer to go work for Sirius. Yeah. But to, look, to look at him, you know, he's the ambassador. And, you know, yeah. and you know, and he's he's con- that guy is so amped up. He's not changed yeah, he's been at a- all. He's just in his box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's, he's loyal to the brand, and he's loyal to the scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just so he's just he's just that guy. I mean, he he has a great time doing what he's doing, and you can tell he's having a great time doing it, and you can tell the the bands that he's interviewing, like the East. Oh, there you go. Whatever, what'd you do, Mike? I, just, I unmuted, unmuted it. Say this. It's just the internet might be going a little weird, but how's that? Is that Perfect. better? Yeah, it's much better. Yeah. All right, cool. So sorry about that. No, no problem. problem. Um, so with with the band, like, but I guess um Chris wanted to go do the family thing and then he got sickles and then like that's is that how that went? No. He uh he actually Chris Chris is Chris is developing serious stomach issues it got to the point where traveling was really hard for him even doing weekend warrior shit you know what i mean even just you know going away for a few days to new york or jersey would be agonizing for him so he he kind of opted out he said that you know uh we'll go do this record which is violence but after that he didn't want to tour anymore because it was too hard for him, yeah. you know? And oh. so it was a little bit weird for us. I mean, I was, I didn't understand it. You know what I mean? I was kind of like agitated at it. You know, the fact that, you know, our drummer fucking not going to you know, be a part of anything. You know what I mean? Or sure. could only be a part of certain things. And so, you know, but we got Tommy and Tommy was, Multi talented dude, he's the kind of guy that he, he could sit with an instrument that he's never even seen before and give him 20 minutes to figure it out. You know, yeah. he's really, really that talented. And he did a great, stellar job. You know, he's a, a good drummer. Yeah, he's a great drummer. I wonder what he's yeah. doing. 
Like, actually, what is he? Uh, I talked to him. I mean, we 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 did a record together in 08, Knives Out. Yes, well, that's we did that. We did that when it was Black Mass Hysteria, which is with uh, me, Tommy, and a couple of the guys from Dog Fashion Disco. Mm -hmm. And uh, that record was fucking great, man. It was so fucking heavy. It could have been another Nothing Face record, actually. We there were a couple, a couple of a couple of those songs were supposed to be Nothing Face, nothing face songs. Well, yeah. I'm glad that you repurposed Nothing Face songs because I mean, obviously, the riffs are like. They inspired my whole band. Like, I mean, oh man, thanks, dude. I'm, no, I'm not even kidding. It's fucking weird. But it's like, that's why it's awesome to have you on. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Uh, I know we're jumping around here a little bit, but it's important that we cover some things that are going on now, too, which is like the coffee that you're coming out with your special blend. I know mm -hmm. guys Rocky Beverage. Um, they sponsor the show. <laughs> oh, do they? Yeah, they're sponsors. As a sponsor. You talked to, talk to Jeff. Uh, I talked to Jeff Barmark yesterday, man. Great guy. Yeah, he's a good dude. Good dude. I mean, they 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 allowed us to bring P King's blend on first, and that's sick. You know, P King's been on the show, who you know very well. Um, and uh, uh, we're lived, we're excited lived, because years. we're gonna <laughs> everyone's gonna actually when this episode comes out, which will be tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow, but when this episode comes out, your coffee will be released the next day mm -hmm. on the 31st of October. Um, what was kind of the inspiration? That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, when I was talking, I talked to Pete King about it, actually. He's the one who kind of gave me the idea. He's just like, hey, you should do it yourself, dude. And so I'm like, yeah, that's not a bad idea. You know, I've been looking to branch out. And, you know, I'm actually got a hot sauce that I'm working on right now. Really? So, well, dude, I'll get into that in a second. But it's All pretty right. fucking, pretty, it's pretty stellar. But so, uh, you know, I reached out. We, we, I got connected with Jeff. And then he started sending me samples of coffees. And I went through a few different batches. And found one that I really like, the blend that I really like that they did. And it's a dark Italian roast. You know, I mean it's so uh -huh. sick, man. It's so good. And uh worked on, you know, kind of the, the imaging of it, what I wanted. I wanted a little bit of Maryland represented, you know, with the with the yep. you know, with the, the logo on there and you know, the Raven of course and uh -huh. and then put put my name on it and so it's it's a different thing for me. It's a new thing for me, and it's it's pretty exciting. And I I've got my guitar company that I work with, Dean. They're 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 going to give us five guitars to give away. You know, what I mean, we're doing kind of like a Willy Wonka type of thing. It's going to be like the Golden first five, yeah. right? Like the first five hundred bags are going to come with picks, and they're going to be like one side to have the rock logo, the other side will have my signature on it mm -hmm. and then five of those bags will have orange picks and if you get the orange pick you get a free sign you win a, a dean guitar oh wow okay. color color subjective availability by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna take what i give you cause... right so that's it that's pretty cool and it's very exciting um and then i got hooked up with a couple down in North Carolina, and uh, his name is John, and he has this company called, his brand is called Captain Catfish, and he puts out sauces. It's hot sauces, cocktail sauces, marinades, steak sauces, and he's a farmer, so everything is 100% organic. Nice. And so I got to talking to him, and I'm like, man, you know, we should do something together. I've got a ton of fucking ideas. I'm a total foodaholic. And I gave him an idea for a sauce. About a month later, he had the recipe down. Oh, yeah. He sent, it, he sent me the sample, and it's a fucking home run. I sent it to Jeff, you know, Jeff Buttermark. Yeah. And I sent it to a couple of my other buddies. They fucking destroyed that bottle within days. They said it was so delicious. There's a guy who invests in sauces. Uh, he's on CSMC. I always watch him. He's like a billionaire or whatever, but like he invests in like... Oh, Marcus Limones? Nope. Marcus Limones is one, but there's another guy. He's uh, like a 
he's from Texas or something. He's like, you no, know, got the. He's badass. He buys people's shit and then puts it out in all his restaurants and his casinos. Right. If you check him out. You probably be able to sell it. Always looking for the next best, best uh, hot sauce. I'm not I'm, you know, I'm excited about it, and we're, you know, we test test drove this first batch, and it's so it's so delicious. We're really excited about it. That's gonna. I mean, we're working on all the legalities of it right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we're doing, you know, we're figuring out the name and the logo, and it's gonna be a little mascot like it should have, and. uh but then we're talking about doing some other sauces as well, like adding on to it, and maybe some cool jams, you know, like a, a cool bacon, onion, cherry, jalapeno jam or something, you know? For like pork or something like that. Like something, anything. Put it on your yeah. finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can dip your pizza in it, it's good enough for everything else, right? Exactly. exactly. By the way, are you still in Maryland? Always. Dude, he's he's he'll never leave that place. Never I am them. Maryland born, born. down, baby. Crab yeah. trademark. That's when I went and crashed. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. You know, the crab cakes are good. You know, I mean, there's, there's there's some bad ones here too. Depends on where you get them. Some dude. So you got the coffee, you get that, and I know we're bouncing around from you know nothing face to hell yeah to what's coming up. But like, there's there's so much we could cover, you know, in an hour. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I mean. Mike, do you have any other kind of things you want to say? Because I mean, I, I mean, have- you know, one first off, thank you so much for making the time, man. Thank and you. Yeah, and that's literally, great. we gotta thank Patrick King for Dude, putting us together. I have to apologize for last week. I'm still, I'm still feeling like shit. Actually, it's not COVID. Like I, uh, did you get the flu or something? Man? Like today? No, no. I think you know what I think. I think I already got COVID. Like, it's real. You know what I mean? Like, it, like if I had a, it happened a while ago. I definitely felt it because I got so sick. Yeah, I got so sick on tour. I mean, like, sicker than I could remember in recent history. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it was terrible, terrible fever. Like, intense flu-like symptoms. Yeah. Cold sweats. My chest was, like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, but no, but this is more like a but just like kind of like a head cold. I've been sleeping with the window open. So oh, wow. Well, I got Good. it. So I mean, I definitely had the same exact symptoms. You breathe for like days. It sucked, man. It almost felt like altitude sickness. Yeah. Oh, that's brutal. You know, you've gotten that a few times. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not fun, man. It's uh it's almost like getting the bends or some shit. You just yeah. completely, completely. You guys been listening to any new music or anything, man? I just discovered a new band, a new Ooh. band from Perth, Australia. Called make them suffer. Make oh, I've heard make them suffer. No. Freaking dope, dude! You got to get the fucking record. It is so fucking sick, man. And then there's a band that's very kind of Deftonesy. They're from. The uh, UK, they're called Loathe. Have you heard them yet? No. Oh, but that's L L O A T H E, and they kind of have like a little bit of a Deftones vibe, but they are fucking sick, dude. You got to check them out too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Make them suffer mm-hmm. and loathe, man. Yeah. All right. Thank and then you. there's that kick-ass band. Uh, they've been around for a few years, but they're really, they're really. Gain, gaining some good attention, uh, Ginger. I like that that band a lot. Ginger's great. Des uh, Des Farrar manages them, right? All over fucking from, from Double Does Driver. he? I believe so. Yeah, Oracle Management is his company. Him and his wife have. No kidding. I yeah, I loved. I've I've liked Ginger from the beginning. The beginning. I like she's her. fucking good too, man. Yeah, Not, she's really good. It's it's still good music, but I don't think it would be where it is right now without the girl. Yeah, <laughs> probably no. She she's definitely. Uh, I mean, she's got that fucking heavy ass fucking singing voice down, mm-hmm. right? She's beautiful, and that's great too. But man, she can fucking sing her ass off. Like she yeah. has really, really great fucking melody. You know, she knows her way around. You know, harmony and stuff like that. And she's not afraid to do it. You know, and then she, yeah, she's she's gorgeous on top of it. Yeah, hey, you got you. Got, there's so many of these bands now. It's just like. 
there, there's the stuff you just want to, you know, bid wheat to the shaft on, but man, there's some that are just, just kill it. Like this, like even bands from the yeah. past, like I just go, why didn't they, your bass player from hell yeah was in this band. Fucking blood, blood simple. simple. Why wasn't that a fucking bigger band? They were sick, right? Yeah, they're awesome. I like yeah. I was talking to Machine about it today. I was like, dude, why didn't that band get any bigger? Because that record was fucking phenomenal. Dude, they were fucking great. We toured with them. Uh, hell yeah. Or during the first album cycle, actually. Yeah. We we went out on tour with them for a couple months, man. And it was fucking... I mean, I've always been a VOD fan, so I love mm-hmm. fucking Timmy mm-hmm. and yeah. Mike. You know what I mean? And being out with them was fucking great because I've, I've always been a VOD fan and I always pick their brain about it and stuff and just being around them because they're such fucking awesome dudes and yeah total total new yorkers you know what i mean oh yeah and uh but yeah blood simple was so much talent dude they're they're so fucking good and oh. and you know thank god you know i mean you know getting kyle was great because he was he is just such a beast player dude oh. like insane you have dreads yeah have- he's got a lot of them yeah yeah got a few of them <laughs> not just one well, that whole family, man, like, you know, his brother, Troy, you know, sings and plays with Mastodon, Killer Be Killed, you know, and, another great band. And then his brother and then his, the younger brother, Darren Bubbs, is a legendary tech. He texts yep. he's V-Man's tech for Slipknot. Yep. And he's been out with Mastodon. He's been. And that's funny how like V-Man used to be the tech for for fucking Mastodon. <laughs> years and years ago you know that's how he got the gig he was yeah. like oh yeah i think it was uh jim called him up and he's like hey you know any bass players he's like yeah me <laughs> <laughs> and then he got the gig yeah it's pretty fucking cool yeah. <laughs> pretty fucking cool cool oh that's crazy yeah have dude. you guys have you guys seen my new guitars yet no no man. that we do want to see you want to see them yes yeah. let me see if i could turn my thing around here but that is right. okay. hold on a second let me turn on the light my my house is a mess man i've been oh stop. i'm like What's doing nice? all kinds of shit everything's folded what are you talking about there's my new hollow body oh. dude now you see the depth you see the pitch the pitch for f holes Fuck yeah dude and then i got the devil horns right here yes. and that one's sid Beautiful. After Sid Vicious, nice. And then, and then this is my baby. This is Lucy. She got the the pentagram. Yeah. You know, it's like the gloss, the gloss pentagram with the flat black, and then the pitchforks. Beautiful. That's pretty, man. Total Motley Crew, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And more. then, and then there's the nothing face hollow bodies. If you all remember, yep. I do. Where's the gold top? And then this, this was uh. This was Dimebag's guitar right here. Oh, wow. wow. And that was given to me um, in, 0- in 08 at OzFest when we did the tribute. And that's his, uh, wrist, his wristbands and stuff. And that's I do have the gold top. It's under the steps. <laughs> <laughs> the most I still, I still have that gold top, man. That's I'll never I'll never guitar. part with that. I've had that's it since I was uh, 11 years old. Yeah, it's your fir- it was your first. That's a great story about that guitar. That's like that was your first guitar you learned on, right? Yeah. Well, my mom bought me uh, a piece of shit just <laughs> to see if just to see if I was passionate, right? Like every parent does, yeah. Right. And then my my uncle saw me dedicated to it, you know, like trying to f- play "Stairway to Heaven" and a bunch of songs on it. He's like, he's really serious about this, so. He brought it over one day and said, if you're really serious about playing guitar, then I want you to learn on a real guitar. And then gave me that Les Paul. It's a 54? Uh, 72. 72. Probably true. Yeah. He he got you to be as dedicated as you are. That's a great year to buy him too, man. 72 built in Kalamazoo. Oh, it's one of the Michigan ones. One of the Michigan ones. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's 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 still the same. It's beat the fuck up. It's got so much miles on it. Um, to this day, I still write pretty much ninety percent of all my songs on it. It's oh, just, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, like one of those boots. things. You know, old it's boots. super. I got superstition, right, right, right. It's, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. I got to write on this guitar, or it's going to suck. 
No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't. You know, he needs his hat. You know, he needs his hat. <laughs> yeah, I've got about I've got about fifteen of those fucking hats now, man. Some of them I've given I re- away. I remember. I remember someone stole your hat on yeah. your cowboy hat on uh, the Pantera tour. Some dumb bitch. Yeah. Yeah. And then fucking <laughs> Shaw goes, I need you to take Tom. There's a store down in the village. He goes, I need you to take Tom to go buy a new hat. And like, yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, dude, 100%. Because we were in the back of the cab and you were just like, I just want this over with. And I still have that fucking hat too. Man. Do you really? Oh, that's awesome. I do. Yeah. It, it weighs a ton because of just years of sweat getting yeah. into it. And, and it's one of those wide brimmer ones. You know what yeah. I mean? But I still have that one. Yeah. I mean, it's probably doesn't fit anymore because they it's leather. Shrinks. So you kind of tighten up after yeah. the years. Right. And I've given some away. Like I've like I there was a, a fan, fr- like a fan slash good friend of ours who was uh, had was given uh, got pregnant and, and was given birth. And I gave her baby gifts inside of the hat i turned it upside down and put all kinds of shit inside of it and gave it to her like that basket as well (laughs) it's right it's it's also a basket basket. (laughs) small bassinet and if you uh yeah you could fill it with water too (laughs) (laughs) probably tastes like salt but you know (laughs) calculate the risk right um hey man First off, at the end, thank you. And, you know, you know you're taking time away from your family and, and, and everything else to come talk to us, man. So that's. Oh, it's all good. My yeah. son's upstairs. He's, we, we, uh, we actually, I was running late, right? Yeah. Because we have another house about a mile and a half from where my house I'm in right now is. And it's a little, we call it the Bay House. That's the name of it. Mm-hmm. And because it's on, it's a waterfront little house, it's on the Chesapeake Bay. Mm-hmm. But it, it's mm. we we moved out a couple of years ago because we outgrew it. My son's twelve years old now, and he needs privacy. Mm. It's only got one bathroom, mm. two bedrooms. It's a small, like nine hundred, maybe a thousand square foot home, but it's a waterfront. You know what I mean? It's fucking yeah. beautiful. So we still go down there quite a bit. You know, every 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 other day we go down there, nice. and uh, I went. We went down tonight to uh, just have a little dinner and just chill out on the, on the deck and, you know, watch the sunset and water and shit, That's you know, awesome. it's Man. making the wife happy. Yeah. Dog. You know. What kind of dog do you That's get? Right. A golden. There we go. Yeah. Come on. That's yeah. golden retriever. Loyal, loyal as they come. Loyal as they come bro. I think she's, ah, she, yeah, she's down here. Hmm. She's just sleeping. She follows me everywhere I go. And I'll tell you the <laughs> truth, man. Like my wife, my wife bought her for me uh, about four months before Vinny passed. And that dog <laughs> saved my ass, man. Like literally like it turned into a therapy dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, it was unbelievable how a dog can pull you up from your deepest pit and just kind of make you feel like, I love you, Dad. <laughs> I love you, Dad. That's the voice I have for my dog, and she's a girl, but it's still like a stupid dude, a Scooby Doo. <laughs> dog's voice is, "Oh, hello." <laughs> That's a good one. Baby, you, you could give me some food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like Mine's that. the Scooby Doo voice. I always do Scooby Doo. Oh, Roro. <laughs> oh, gee, Scoob. Yeah. Oh, gee, Scoob. Man, it, it sounds yeah. like you're you're living your best life, man. That's great. You get to spend your time with your family, you have dinner and stuff like that. And Wait, I mean, I get a little bit. It gets a little bit, you know. Like I was saying, the groundhog Dang, fucking really. aspect of it. Like, there's times where I'm just like, "Fuck, man, there ain't nothing to do. I'm going to the liquor store and buying a fucking, you know, a handle, you know, and." <laughs> And I'll just drink, you know what I mean? But that's not, nothing ever good comes out of it. You know what I mean? It's just, if anything, my, my wife looks at me all cross-eyed and then the next morning I feel like shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so you're I always just, going on the road for as long as you've gone. And then now you're just, you're, you're at home seeing what's going to happen and doing the best you can. So you're just human. It's tough. Yeah. Not simple yeah. Thing. You know, 
anybody. It's the funny thing is, man, you know, it, it's like, you know, like when I come off the road, you know, I, I kind of shut down. Like I don't drink as much, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you, if, if you drink, if you're, if you like to drink and I do like to drink, you know, being on tour, that's the one thing that, you know, you always wonder like, you know, how do you musicians just fall into that kind of shit? Well, you know, it's, it's pretty fucking easy. You know, <laughs> you're, you're surrounded by it 24 hours a day. They, they cater it to you. You know, it comes backstage bottles of liquor Mm -hmm. You know, you're so amped up. You got to leave. You're amped up. And the only way you can get to sleep is by a few you know, drinking a fucking half gallon of fucking whiskey. You know, what kind of whiskey, Jack? Crown. Crown. I'm a, I love Crown. I love Seagram 7. Uh, I'm, a, I'm really, yeah, Crown is definitely my favorite, man. I love Crown Royal. Yeah. Pretty classy looking bottle, too. And you get that bag, get that nice little bag, bag to bag. keep all your knickknacks in and mm -hmm. your spare change and fucking whatever else. Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> my sack. Dude, I've been like, you know, I I, I got my card about a year because Marilyn, I, I couldn't believe when Marilyn, you That's know, went, went medical. Right. It's not recreational still, you know, because it's such a uptight, you know, pol political town. But, um, once I got turned on to concentrates, man, I just could not go back to flower because it th took so little for me to get to where I want to go. Yeah. And I don't have just the, the, the deal with the mess. I mean, every once in a while I'll, I'll indulge with some friends right. and burn a joint or whatever, but you know, I've gotten so used and fell in love with, with the concentrates, you know, and mm -hmm. especially this is, this is what I'm talking about. I what's that? Up, Greg? This is uh, a concentrate. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'm pointing at it because I'm smoking it while fucking talking. Here, right, I'll show I, you mine. I do the pills, man. They're fucking great. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, dude. They got these, they got these concentrated THC pills. I want to smoke something. So it's you good. take them in the either sativa or, or, or indica and it will, okay. it will take you care of good. I'm going to take a little tour. You guys, can you guys see this? Hell yeah. And so there's my little orange amplifier. Horrible. I know, isn't it? Yeah, it is. is that but th this is my, uh, you ready? Yeah. yeah. The rig. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. These are all dab, dab darts. You guys familiar with dab darts? Yo, yeah. I am now. I These do. are, Unopened, a little sour diesel right there. Oh wow! And then you know, it's just they're just it's just it's, it's just all there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Nothing better than that. I love how it comes in its own pelican case. It does. <laughs> <laughs> the and my wife hates it when I open it too, man. She's like, "God damn, it stinks." <laughs> 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 I'm wondering. Um, she's used to it though. I mean, we, we've been together for 27 years, man. Oh, Allie. Yeah, no, totally. I remember her. Yeah. 27 her, years. Allie. Yeah. Um, 27 years. That's a fucking, that's a long time. It's a lifetime. Yeah, my warrant is up. I remember you guys were engaged towards the end of oh, violence. Yeah, we, we got engaged on, we got engaged at the Hammerstein Ballroom. That's right. Opening for Pay Terror. That's right. I was at that Mike show. Was I was there. I was not at that show. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Was the TBT van or the fucking violence van, the painted violence van. Oh, yeah. 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 That's cool. We used to, man, we, we, did, we toured, we had our own, we had a, like a conversion van that we toured in forever. And we didn't give a fuck, man. We just like, got in there and just went for it. You know, we didn't. We didn't, I think we had, we had a bus obviously for the Pantera tours and stuff like that, but we just, whenever we went out, you know, we, we just kind of just did it our, did it ourselves and packed everybody in and just fucking did it. Nobody cared. You know, we just, you right. know, that's what you, that's what you got to do. It's kind of like getting into the garage and just sucking, you know what I mean? And just making it right. Yeah, man. Just got to get through it. 
Yeah, yeah. Fucking forward. You, you uh, told the story on on Doc's podcast that was kind of interesting about when you guys first went to Germany as hell yeah, and you guys didn't have any hotel rooms. That was like that was staggering to me because I remember the 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 amount of crew Pantera had and the accommodations they had. You know, traveling. Mm-hmm. In. It's very. Yeah it's very awesome to see kind of like I'm this hum- I'm humble enough to know that this band, you know, Vin, like you said, like with Vinny, it was like, he knew, you know, that this is, was a different situation than Pantera. Just the, of course, the classiness of the situation, essentially. And, and you know what? And he of all people didn't complain about it. Yeah. He didn't care, you know, and this is a motherfucker who, Oh my God, you know what? I need not say anything else. You know what I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, and we did, we, the thing is when you go over there, you're unproven. Yep. You know, um, you don't have the money. Mm-hmm. They're not paying you. In fact, you're going in debt, going over there. You're in debt before you even get on a plane to get over there, but wow. you do it because you have to build, you know, and, and it's an investment. So you have to cut corners, you know, and you know, you're, you're sleeping on the fucking bus 24 hours a day. You're lucky to get a, get a, uh, uh, a dressing room with a shower. And the good thing about Europe is that all the dressing rooms have showers. Every one of them. Yeah, that's true. And they're, and they're pretty clean too, you know? And, and then, yeah, we didn't have hotels. Sometimes we would get a hotel, but it would be one room that we would all, all just go in and shower. And then, you know, use the toilet and that, and and flip for who was going to sleep in there, which I never slept in there anyway, because it's just like, you know, you don't ever get any peace and quiet when you're with somebody, yeah. you know, you share on a bus, you can like drown it out, put your mm-hmm. headphones on or the air conditioner is blowing so loud. You don't hear anybody. Mm-hmm. But I remember like Vince on those tours, man, he wouldn't, he would, he would never sleep in the bunk. He would always take up, Cause there's double decker buses over there. They have yeah. like one, two, three lounges in them. You know, like they have the downstairs lounge. Then you have the upstairs, the front lounge in the front, which is kind of small. And then you have a back lounge and he would always like kind of set up shop in one of the back lounges and sleep back there. Mm-hmm. He would never sleep in his own bunk. Hmm. That's, that's the way to go right there though. And then he would never shower either. I think he did a whole tour in Europe without showering. Stop it. <laughs> he would literally go over there with a fucking I mean, when in Rome, right? Especially if you're in front. Yeah. <laughs> he had two he took he would take two pairs of jeans and a, a few t shirts. And then he had the stage gear that he would recycle, you know, like, you know, fucking if we had laundry, but he didn't give a fuck, man. He was just, yeah. he's like, you know, I'm going on tour and I don't give a shit. My girlfriend's back home and I ain't got to dress up and smell good for nobody. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's for you guys. Yeah. There you go. But yeah, you know, but again, though, you have to, that's part of the thing. You know, you have to be willing to get out of your own way and get out of what you would consider your comfort zone and suck it up you know, for the, for the bigger, bigger cause. Yep. And obviously yeah. paid off, right? It does. And it doesn't, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing, you know, um, it's, it's, it's weird. You know, like breaking in Europe is completely different than breaking here because like, even like a band like Godsmack, for example, they rarely go over there. And this is like, like Shannon told me, he's like, we're an American band. He's like, we go to Europe. We're playing 200 capacity places. Wow. You know, you know they just, it just doesn't work translate. that way. Yeah. Right. It doesn't translate. Now you'll have a band like Avenged Sevenfold who does translate over there. And they're taking bands like they took us over there. They took Five Finger over there, you know, and you know, Five Finger now, you know, they translated. You know, yeah. they're, they're fucking doing great over there. Like a tri- Trivium does better over there than they do do here in a lot of ways. Machine Head too. Yeah, so Machine Head yeah. exactly was broken really well in Europe versus here. Well, yeah, I think I mean, it's Beatlemania. Yeah, I like Godsmack, but they're very, very generic mainstream band. And there's a there's an audience for that. There's definitely mm-hmm. for that. 
I think the metal bands that are heavier and that are a little more proggy, they get accepted over there a lot more. They, they do better over there. It's the bands that don't do great over here that do great over there. Generally. That's true. And the bands that do great over there, it's the same. You know what I mean? There's not many, like, you know, that Viking kind of metal shit, right? Yeah. I'm on a Marth, yeah. They have, a, they, they have a great, they're a great band. They have a good fan base, but, oh, yeah. but they're, they're only one of about, 50 bands yep. where that the, the rest the other 49 will never fucking see that kind of like reception yeah, over here and just to show you i mean it's interesting you say that so shaw who's you know we all we all know and love dearly mm -hmm. um he was production manager for mon last year mm -hmm. and i got to go to some of the production meetings and he was like literally designing stage for here which was drastically different mm -hmm. than the fucking 50 foot ice Titans on either side of the stage and like mm -hmm. <laughs> huge amount of fucking pyro that they weren't mm -hmm. travel with here because it just cost effective wise. didn't make sense. Right. They were playing like 500 seaters. I think the biggest place they played was the palladium in LA. Right. That whole entire tour. And that's, and that's the, uh, that's the difference. I mean, like the American audience is very fickle mm -hmm. and they, it's a fast food society. You yeah. know what I mean? It, and go. it's, and it's, it's like what I want, I want it now. And then I'm done with it. Yep. Yep. In Europe, it's different. Like when you, when you break in Europe, they're fans for fucking life. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? You can still go back. You might not play a fucking show in North America or maybe five a year. You go to Europe and you do a whole tour and you make, total bank and you're able to survive for the next two years from mm -hmm. from that stuff you know what i mean so it's it's kind of like a a weird thing you know what i mean like how was it the it, down you said before you said it was good and then it wasn't good now it was good because it it did help you break in europe right but what was the, the downside of that well i mean it's very expensive to tour in europe it's very expensive to tour over there you have to you really do have to downsize unless you're, I mean, unless you're a prima donna, unless you're massive right. and you can take a big fucking set with you and can afford to do that, which very few bands from America can do that. Can do, yeah. They, they, they really can't, you know I mean? It depends on who you are and the what kind of smoke and mirror game you can play. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you, I mean, it's, it's weird. Like, cause like you think of a band like ghost, for example, they yep. did, they did a string of arena shows mm -hmm. here in the States. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. would have ever thought Thank that you. could happen. Thank you. They played the forum in LA. I'm like, why the fuck are they playing the forum? I don't get this. Like, they're not that big of a band. Are they like, I mean, I guess they are. Well, I don't, I don't think they've gotten a fucking gold fucking record over here. I don't no. think five, I don't think they've sold 500,000 albums yeah. off of one record, yeah. but it's how it's sold, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's really, it's perception. It's a kind of smoke and mirrors in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, it's, I, I, it's just good management and fucking mm -hmm. just, just the way it's built. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and, People over here are like, they look at it and it's just like, Ooh, you know, this is, this is, this could be something like going to see the Trans Siberian Orchestra. Orchestra. Yeah. Lots of lights and pretty <laughs> colors and a weird dude that's Thank scary you, on stage, you know? And, <laughs> wow, let's take the kids. He might like this guy. You know, I saw them open. I saw them open for Meriden a few years ago and they were great. I mean, they really do. They're fucking, you know. listen, man, I fucking love the fucking band. Some of the songs, are a little too poppy for me mm -hmm. at times, but they're heavier shit, especially like the first earlier record. That first yep. album reminded me so much of like Blue Oyster Cult versus Merciful Fate. Yes. You know what I mean? It like just had that. Hammer and songs like that. And Fuck Blue yeah. Blue Elizabeth was great, yes. you know. But uh, yeah, Square Hammer was sick, dude. And fucking, and even, you know, Pinnacle, the pit, mm -hmm. whatever. Don't do all that. Fucking sick riff, dude. Yeah. You can't you can't deny good riffs. No, definitely. You know what I mean, not. good hooks. Yeah. And he, and the guy's talented. You know, he he did a really good job of keeping the mystique 
going as long as he could before, you know, ex band members start selling them so, out and throwing yeah, them under the bus them. and shit like that. <laughs> right. But, you know, listen, you know, that's, that's kind of like, that kind of happens sometimes, you know, like a guy has an idea and he, it's, it's his fucking band. You know what I mean? And he gets good players and these players share that vision, but you know, the main, uh, you know, the main bulk of the, the, the reward is going to that guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they, there had to have been some kind of understanding. You have to, you have to let that be known from the beginning. Yeah. You know, you okay with that as a musician to be part of it? Like, look at Mark Rizzo from Il Nino, originally, who is another mm -hmm. band overseas or when Christian was in the band. Uh, he basically, um, essentially, fucking, um, what was it? What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, he went to Soulfly and he's been in Soulfly ever since. For right. And he wrote the Darkness album with Darkness in it. I forget which one. It's like maybe three albums, four albums back. And it's an amazing album. It's fucking great. He's not going to get that album. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. But that's the same like with, with Ozzy, for example. Yeah. Like, you know, they got nothing from that. Record. They all the know. Records. And they have to sign a fucking mm -hmm. agreement that this is Ozzy's fucking band. And it's even if you write the fucking song, You'll get paid for that, but you're not getting the publishing for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And granted, I mean, Zach knows what time it is with that. And, but Ozzy takes care of him very well. Mm -hmm. And he's given, he's given Zach a career. Yeah. You know? Zach could do fucking whatever he wants. You know, he could yeah, fucking I mean, go. He's a guitar a God. Cover, cover band in the Jersey shore. If he did not have Ozzy. Totally. You know, and that's the price you pay. It's like that's your, that's your, that's what it, that's your what it costs you for admission. Right. You know what I mean? That's the price to admission. Not selling your soul, but it's compromising it for a little while until you could do what you want to do. Well, the great thing is that you know he has his own platform now. Ozzy launched his you know career because right. Of course, the biker thing. That's. He's like, I'd like to thank this chapter and Florida chapter, the Chicago chapter, the Texas chapter, every chapter of every state. Think about how they, the, the, the fucking crowd he has. It's all the yeah. player community. Those guys are die hard fucking fans. Beale and like fans. and like you said, Mike, it's like, you know, if it wasn't for that, for Ozzy, he'd be playing somewhere in Jersey. Yeah, where he's from. Jersey. Right. Mm. Right. <laughs> Well, fellas, my phone is about to die, man. Dude, thank you so much. I could stay on for another hour talking <laughs> shit with you guys, man. We can have you back on whenever you want. So. Whenever you yeah, want. Yeah, that sounds cool. Thomas, as always, thank you, my man. Thanks, guys, man. See you soon. All right, brothers. Take care, man. You as well. See it. That was so cool. Like We could have probably... He was just like hanging out. I was like... <laughs> I'll hang out for another hour. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. You want, uh, you want to talk? Well, that's right. That's he, awesome. he, that was so like what we've done on the show so far has been you know it's been really inspiring it's like you know some of your favorite people that you've been looking up to and then not even yeah. people that you would actually think about looking up to but then you find that are amazingly inspiring after talking to them but yeah Tom maxwell is a hero of ours we yeah. you know um and i've known him for years but and like, I know you're the reason why i like nothing face you're the yeah. reason you ever listened to him in the first place yeah. so thank you I, you know it, it's funny when i call that we got to thank patrick king again for yeah, and, and 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 andy bucheroth from from 10th street for help, oh. helping us out with this but yeah. you know i was talking to shaw a few weeks ago i said yeah maxwell's coming on he's like um oh, tom's such a great guy and i was like yeah he is he's always been that way awesome. um it's what i love about him and you know it's always been cool to me and mike you yeah know, i've watched a lot of history with those guys a real lot of good things to say um, yeah, we're gonna go through that, and there's a lot of moments in there where he was like speaking, like speaking, like some real yeah. nuggets of like value to our listenership, and yep. it's just the, what we're all about, you yeah. know, hitting those points. I want to say this one thing though uh, before we lose this point. He did talk about the coffee and hot sauce. It is you were listening to this episode on October 30th. Go mm -hmm. out today. And pre-order because it comes out tomorrow or go out tomorrow. It's Halloween, but you know, you might be busy for Halloween, even though they've, tr they've tried to cancel it. Um, but you know, go out and go to rocked beverage.com rock D beverage. Yeah. So it's R O C K D 
beverage.com and go and pick up his blend of coffee, the Italian espresso. And he's, no, he's passionate about it. It's not like he's just yeah. drinking coffee as we're talking to him. I mean, he loves coffee. He didn't even talk about how much he loves coffee, but I know he loves coffee. And he's passionate about developing a good. I can't wait for the hot sauce. And hot sauce too. Yeah, dude. Oh. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Oh, it's going to be amazing. So anyway, run out. Go get it. Um, it's out tomorrow. Um, pre-order today. Anyway, uh, dude, another great show. We have you for it.